I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. I want to greet the people of God in the name of Jesus. God has been wonderful to all of us. He has spared us to be in this place together to lift up his holy name. We do not take for granted the mercies of Almighty God. And therefore we are here not for what we want to receive, but what we have to give. And therefore we are here to worship the name of the Lord tonight. If you are grateful for all that God has done for you, just lift your hands in the sanctuary and magnify his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In the 14th century, our forefathers were shipped from the Gold Coast of Ghana to the Caribbean as slaves. Bounded by shackles or taskmasters, by they, they were they took us away against our own will and treated us with contempt. Yes. Tonight it's my privilege and honor to return to Ghana and I say return among my brothers and sisters to declare freedom. Hallelujah. And I dream Amen. The significance of this freedom is not just physical from the chains and shackles and forced labor that was trust upon our forefathers. But I speak of a freedom from the horrors of sin. And therefore, as the songwriter says, glorious freedom, Wonderful freedom, no more in chains of sin I repine. Hallelujah. Or sin, I said you want to fall on a car, you know. Or say, and Munyam Kessia, a war, sir, for who deemu, I am one one, ya, and Munti, as I say, I shall need to do your cupassi. Jesus, the glorious emancipator, now and forever, he shall be mine. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Christo, and our mafa, who dia, and Munyam Wumwa, or necessary, I you can be Amen. I want to remind you that sin is dangerous and destructive. Pesa, or Kaya, Grace, Bonia, dear, a hoopa, not a say, a dear so. It will take you much farther than you want to go. And you will be caught by beer, only one dress or Keep your 
you much longer than you want to stay and cost you much more than you want to pay. And so we are happy tonight that Jesus Christ has delivered us from sin. And so we are happy I want to greet all the delegates here tonight and all our brothers and sisters and trust that as the word of God goes forth, your hearts will be open to receive saying. Tonight I am invited to address the theme Becoming a Christ Center Church. I want to remind you that our greatest privilege on this earth is to follow Jesus Christ. Our greatest joy is to know Jesus Christ. And our greatest goal is to bring glory to Jesus Christ even through our worship. The word church comes from a Greek word ecclesia. Which is defined as an assembly or called out ones. Yeah, yeah. And so the root word meaning of church is not that of a building but of a people. And therefore, a Christ centered church simply is a church with Christ at his center. With Christ at its focal point, with Christ at its hub, with Christ in its heart. With Christ settled in its score. Hallelujah. Christ must be that which hold everything together. Some churches that are around us are money centered. Where its leaders place the emphasis on money. And you're told that you have to pay to get special favors from God. Some churches are personality centered. Where the ministry surrounds the, 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 the an, a prophet or an apostle or some famous person to after whom the ministry is named. See, some churches are doctrinal centered. Where unless you believe what they believe and preach what they preach, you are cast out of the kingdom. But we are called not to be a money-centered church. Not to be a personality-centered church. Not to be a doctrine-centered church. 
But God has called us to be a Christ-centered church. It is therefore not surprising that the number one item on our vision statement as a conference is to become Christ-centered. The first step to become Christ-centered is to know Christ intimately. Hallelujah. It is not about academical knowledge. And yet, university baby was young Marco But it's a knowledge that comes from experience. It's a knowledge that comes from your being with Christ and know exactly who he is. Saint Matthew. 16 and verse 13 down tells us that when Jesus came through the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples a question. He asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And they He did not ask them, what are people saying about you as my disciples? But he asked, what are the people saying about me as the Messiah? Sometimes as children of God, we get caught up too much with what people are saying about us as individuals. And we allow what people say about us to accept or uh, affect our relationship with God. But it's not very important as to what people are saying about you. Jesus asked his disciples, what are they saying about me? The disciples replied, Some say you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elias. Elijah. Others say you are Jeremiah. Or one of the other prophets. In other words, they were saying that you're a good man. He's a good man. He's a good teacher. He's a loving man. But Jesus asked, he turned the question to them. Is disciples is followers? No, yes, Christo Ebusa Nesia for or two samples, you know, Emma Nesia for. And he asked them, Who do you say that I am? In your number, so would you say, Mimi, a wine? Now, it is important if if they were following Christ over a period of time and was with him every day. Then the Lord wanted to find out if they knew who he really was. Yeah, and see, now yes, some of us have been following Christ for 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. It is important that you answer this question that was posed to the disciples. When Jesus asked the question, Simon Peter jumped up 
and the answer. Ne Brian Scripts of Busa Samuel and a Simon Peter, a soldier in a Oman wire. He said, You are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Now, Obua said, Only Christ to know, only Uncle Pontius, the phone number. Jesus said, Peter, this information did not come from man, but it came from the Father. Or see, now yes, you catch me, Peter said. It is indeed a revelation. And upon the truth of this statement that you have uttered, Christ said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hallelujah. And therefore, if Christ stated that the church will be built upon the foundation or the understanding that he is the Christ, then it has to be a Christ-centered church. She said, Asafuno, yeah, Yesi, now you want to say, I said, I said, I said, I said, I Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And Christ said once it is a Christ centered church, I will give the keys of the kingdom to you. And whatsoever you bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Yes, you can say, Obesi Nasra dying. Now, as some other people to be treated as intimidated, Safwana by Mamo. Now, be be a more best than what by Mamo. Amen. The church must begin to understand that the power that was exhibited by Jesus Christ is really has really been passed on to the church now. Hallelujah. But the only way we can experience this power is through the revelation and the knowledge that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Now, and so I want us to understand that the main problem that the church has today is lack of knowledge. If we do not have the power that God has left for his church, it means we are walking in spiritual darkness. And it's full time that we have a revelation, a similar revelation that Paul Peter received. If you do not know God the way you need to, you won't know enough truth. And it is the truth that will set us free. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. I want to share with you two quick passages. The first one is taken from Colossians. One and reading from verse 15. It says the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. In him all things were created. Things in the heaven and things on earth. Visible and invisible. Whether it be thrones or powers 
or authorities. To me, oh, I and I'm gonna by it. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. See, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn among the dead. So that in him everything he might have supremacy. And so this passage tells us that Jesus Christ was made the head of the church. And, and he desires to have the supremacy among us. And therefore we need to become a Christ centered Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. We need to remove ourselves out of the limelight. And we need to put Jesus Christ in front. At the center of all things. In order for Christ to become the center of the church, he must first of all become the center of your individual lives. Many of us complain on a regular basis that things are hard, life is difficult and challenging. And we cannot seem to find the way out. But have you ever considered putting Christ at the center of your life? Some of us work so hard that we cannot find time to pray and to seek God. Some of us are so busy trying to find our way out of the mess that we don't have time to, to put our situation before God. But my advice to you tonight is to stop what you're doing and put Christ at the center of your life. I want to read the second passage. Taken from Ephesians chapter 1. Every episode and verse 15. Ever since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks to you remembering you in my prayers I keep asking God of our Lord Jesus Christ the glorious Father that he may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation Similar to what Peter got. So that you may better know him, Jesus Christ. Your goal as a believer is to know Christ better every day. 
And therefore, it must become a part of your regular routine where you read the Word of God. Where you pray and meditate on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make Him the head of your life. And so Paul prayed that my first prayer for you is that you know him better. Because guess what? I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Because when the eyes of your heart or your understanding is enlightened, you will come to the knowledge of some truths that will set you free. And one, you will know the hope to which he has called you. Bless the name of the Lord. Now hope is important to the child of God. You know we always speak of the verse. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And we usually make faith the core of that passage. But I want to show you something that it is not really faith, but it is hope. Hope is a understanding, a confidence that the thing I desire will happen. Faith is the journey that takes you to the fulfillment of hope. And that is why the passage says, faith is the substance of things that you hope for. If there is no hope, there can be no faith. Hope tells me that I must establish a business. Faith tells me that I must go after that building over there to run the business. I might or might not be successful in getting that building. But although, although I did not get that building, I still hope to set up a business and so my faith would point me to another building somewhere else. And therefore, hope is important in the life, the life of the believer. And so Paul here is saying that the hope to which you are called, I pray that your eyes will be enlightened, that you'll understand the hope to which you are called. And when you understand that hope, then like Paul, nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God. 
effigy, you know. The second point that Paul prayed about is that the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Now, the Tosumi Nua or Bong Payan said, Ah, and Quantia, we are to Amaya, and also, yeah, and Munyamu and Sabeka. So he wants you to know that God has or has an inheritance in you as a child of God. Who me? You mean worthless me? Yes! God values you more than you value yourself. See? And whenever we get to the point and stop, stop devaluing ourselves and understand seeing things through God's eyes, that in God's eyes we are valuable, then it will propel us to go on. Hallelujah. And so God has an inheritance in his holy people. You need to understand as a child of God you are holy. Because what Christ has done for us has moved us from the control of sin into a life of holiness. And so never tell yourself that I'm a sinful being. That will make the blood of Jesus Christ of none effect. The songwriter says, oh yes, oh yes, I'm a child of the king. Is royal blood now flows through my veins. And I who was wretched and poor now can say, praise God, hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm a child of a king. The third point that Paul's point, Paul points out in Ephesians 1. He wants us to further understand the incomparable greatness, the great power for us who believe. Many times as believers we feel helpless and powerless. Say say me And we allow the enemy to walk over us and to trample us. But it's time for the people of God to rise up and make Christ the center of our church. And the, and the center of our lives. So can we that so that we can understand the incomparable great power that God has placed in us who believe. Can you imagine the same power that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead is in us, and if we use that power, we're able to conquer everything in our life. Bless the name of the Lord. This power said to me. As the scripture said, he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead. And seat him, set him at the right hand 
of the heaven in the heavenly realms. Far above all rule and authority. Yeah, Power and dominion. To me, any uh, and every name that is invoked, not only in this present age, but also in the age to come. And God has placed all things under his feet. And appointed him to be head of over everything for the church. Which is the body. The fullness of him. Who fulfills everything in every way. Hallelujah. So when we make Christ. The center of our lives. And the center of the church. He empowers us to conquer everything to say man comes in our way. Yes, Christo, it is a fun wing in a no dia brabo soa. A sad day, a me exhibiti bibia sukinu. The theme tonight becoming a Christ centered church admits that we are not there yet. Oh, see, uh, Jumadia yet in a trust, I'm saying, I'm a piece of tea. And so I trust that tonight the word will so impact you that you begin to find your way. To become Christ centered individuals which make up a Christ centered church. May you med meditate upon these words and may God continue to bless you as we give him first place. God bless you. Amen.